it's easy to get in and out and when it raining and you didn't you had something over your head though the only thing about a high wing which i you know didn't like that well is when you're on base and you turn to base you the wing hides the airport if you're coming around and um and then you open up and you turn on final of course it's fine from there on in and it lands pretty easy slow about a hundred and oh 45 knots or so you can touch down at 45 knots yeah 45 145 is a little it's never seen 145 I think flies at about 130 to 135 and um, pretty efficient on a fuel gear hangs down here and uh, you know you don't have to worry about to get the gear down any of that like you do on a 310 or a Baron or well, any of those and uh, this one I, I particularly had pretty old-fashioned equipment on it. It was used as an instructor uh, by Robert uh, Rupert. Yeah. And so he wasn't using it that much, so I just kept it at home for probably three or four months. And then uh, whenever I was having to fix my airplane and needed to go someplace, I'd find myself on 172. Easy to fly as, as they get. And um, smooth, fairly efficient. And I uh, can't remember what I was getting gallons per hour. I think it was something like seven and a half to eight, something like that. And so, uh, uh, and, and uh, easy to work on. The only problem was fueling the thing. You had to climb up on the step or get a ladder or something to fill the wings up with fuel. But other than that, it's a nice, good little airplane. There's a bunch of them out here. Oh, yeah. Even got a uh, 172 float plane over there. That's not a 172, is it? Yeah. Now, obviously, like with any airplane, um, you know, the 172 has to be respected. So uh, there are certain things that you would want to avoid in a 172, uh, one of those being aerobatics. <laughs> so those are prohibited. Spins, although uh, the 172 can recover from spins, they're not part of normal operations and require, you know, uh, you got to know what you're doing if you're messing with that. So that would be avoid potential dangers. So um, so spins, not a good idea. Obviously, high density altitude. This is a normally aspirated airplane with not an immense amount of power. So you got to pay attention to that. So now we're going to get into the variants. But one interesting uh, note on the 172, there was a world record set in uh, 1959 in a 172 where it literally flew uh, it was being refueled, but it flew for 64 days and 20, in 22 hours being refueled in the air, um, which is a world record for flight endurance. I can't even imagine. But uh, anyway, um, that's an interesting one.